Today we're gonna play with Piggy. Hi, Piggy. Hi, Anna. Hello, friends. Hola. Hi, friends. I'm Anna. I'm a bilingual speech language pathologist. And in this video, I want to share with you a toy that you can use in your next session when working with your client or with your child at home to stimulate lots of language. But today we're going to primarily focus on joint attention and imitation. Now, joint attention and imitation are the foundations for building social language, play, and lots of developmental skills. So today we have my piggy bank. Hello. Hola, cerdo. Hello. So you can use any toy at home. I'm going to target this toy to give you examples of how I use it in my therapy sessions to stimulate all these areas of language development and what we call pre-linguistic skills. Before a child can start talking, we want to make sure that they have the foundations for language to build on. Now we have joint attention, which is the ability of two people to focus on something in the environment, be a toy, an object, or talking about an event. It requires your communication partner, your child to be looking at you and attending to where you're pointing. This might be something as simple as you seeing a dog and pointing to the dog, look dog, and the child looks at the dog or looks at you for referencing. Oh, so this is a mutual social interaction between two people. I really like this toy. This piggy bank comes with coins and this is a great way to start to invite your child to play with you in this back and forth interaction. So today we're going to target on some turn taking and we're going to work on some words and we're also going to work on getting the child excited to attend and to also imitate. So for a child to be able to talk and produce new words and imitate our words, they must be able to imitate our actions. We start with having the child do as we do, so they imitate what we're doing, and slowly we build up from there and they can imitate what we're saying. Now, I love this activity because you have two of each coins and we want to hold the coins and as the adult, we're going to have control of the situation. The child, we're going to invite them to play with this and we're going to just start putting the coins in and make sure that the child is at eye level. So sit down low on the floor and put this up high so both of you could be having your eye gaze towards the activity, towards the object. So we go coin in. Boop. Now we want to make this loud and fun and exciting. <gasps> Piggy, Piggy has a coin in. Your turn. So we're working on turn taking. This is also a good way to introduce my turn, your turn. Wait, wait, we're waiting. The sign for wait, like you're counting your fingers. Wait, wait. And we also want to uh, help the child. If the child is not really paying attention to us, we want to again capture their attention. Pig, your turn. Pig, put the coin in, in. Ready? And then when they're looking, maybe we can give them some cue words to anticipate what's happening next. Ready? One, two, three, push! Yay! Coin in. We can target lots of vocabulary with this activity. Coin in. We can build from their blue coin in. Boop. We can add those environmental exclamatory sounds. Boop. Or ready, set, Boom! Wee! Boom! In goes the coin! Bye bye coin! With this activity, we also want to wait and pause and provide some thinking time for the child and for them to process the information, process what's going on, and then wait for them to tell us something or look at us or point or anything, any form of feedback that they're paying attention to you and they want more of the activity. So if your child's nonverbal, maybe we can start working on signing more. So two hands together, more. You want more pig. This is a sign for pig, pig. And I like to include the little sounds. Pig, oink, 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 oink. Orange, should we do the orange? And then we pause and we hope that the child will nod their head or make eye contact. 
We're both looking at the orange one. You could bring it close to your face, get really close to the pig so they're looking at you and they include you in the play. A lot of children on the autism spectrum are lacking uh, solid joint attention skills and imitation and eye contact and eye gaze. So this is great for them to start including and noticing that you are also part of this activity. So to get to the pig, to get to the coin, they have to get to you and they have to request. So this is where you encourage, you pause. You're right here with the coin and the pig right in the middle. <laughs> and then you just wait. Should we do more? And if the child doesn't say anything, maybe you can gently grab their hands. Coin and push, 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 yay. Now what I like about this activity is once that the coins are all all done and inside the pig, then you can work on other words like open, close. Should we take the coins out? Open. And we want to point, we want to make sure that they're tracking what we're looking at and use your finger to point and give them that visual cue. Open. We also want to simplify our language. Okay, now it's your turn. Open the door and take the coins out. That's a lot of words for a child to process. So hold it, point, coins out. And if the child doesn't do anything, open. And if the child is not doing anything, you can model what you want them to do. Open. So we want to say it slow, elongate those vowels, make it very exciting for them to attend to that prosody in our voice. Open. Close. Open. Do you see all those coins? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All done coins. So together you can work on some counting and um, these coins have a number. Here's a number two. On the other side, they have animals, little pig, little doggy. What number do you see? Six, yes. And also some children on the autism spectrum love to focus on letters, numbers, and shapes. A six will always be a six. The color blue will always be a blue. So this doesn't require them to really process and think and um, go beyond that. So we want to encourage, um, if they're focusing on the numbers and colors, that's great, but then we want to make it functional. Put the one in the pig. Where's the one going to go? Bye-bye. Where did it go? In the pig. You can also work on body parts and identifying. Do you see the pig's eyes? Eyes, los ojos. And if you speak another language, I speak Spanish. Nariz. Donde esta tu nariz? Where's your nose? Mi nariz. Boop, boop, boop. Nariz. Pig's nose. The pig's mouth. He's smiling. He's happy. Happy. Do you see? He has a tail. I do want to warn you, this comes with batteries, which is really fun and makes um, a lot of toys that have batteries are very exciting for kids. However, if the toy does a lot of movement, a lot of noise, a lot of lights, that's when the more the toy does, the less the child does. So all of a sudden the toy is entertaining the child. So here we do want to be careful. I typically like to remove batteries from toys. I also like to um, encourage parents to put some tape over the speaker to muffle the sound and quiet that so it's not such an auditory like sensory overload. Some kids really get over stimulated with loud noises and some adults too. Um, so yes, just be sensitive to that and try to figure out what your child likes. I'm gonna show you how this works. Level one, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun, fun. So we can play, play, play with our pig. And then we wait and maybe the child looks at it. Should we close? Close. close. And then we push the nose. That's my nose. Oh. Hoi, hoi. That's 
to your nose, sorry. This can be an opportunity for your child to start to get excited about interacting with this new toy. Some children will love it. Maybe your child doesn't even pay attention to it. So you can keep the battery option and see um, if when you turn it on, your child starts looking. And that's when you hold on to the toy, to the piggy and to the coins, and you control the situation and you work uh, more on the back and forth and on the eye gaze and the joint attention and the imitation in, out, open, close, all done, more please. Um, so there's many opportunities to play, to be an awesome play buddy. I do encourage you to try not to quiz your child. What color is this? Yellow. What color is this? What number do you see? What animal do you see? What color? Just model. Model what you would like the child to say. Green coin. Blue coin. Blue coin in. Bye bye coin. Did you see? And you know, I'm not saying don't ask any questions, but maybe you can make it a multiple choice question. Which coin should we put in? The red one or the orange one? And if they point or look, that's great. Even if they have the word, I try in my therapy sessions and with my daughters, I don't push and I don't say, but tell me what color. I know you know the color. Just say it. Use your words. I mean, can you hear it? Can you hear the pressure? <laughs> so just breathe and just have fun with your child. Model. Trust that all this modeling, all this language is going into their brain. We want to make it fun. We want to make it meaningful and functional and for the child to remember playing with you, not being tested. And if you're doing this uh, via teletherapy, I encourage you to have the mom or the parent or the caregiver point to the screen to whatever coin that you should give the pig and the parent there is the model. So you have some pointing, which is also important for joint attention, pointing, look. You can also cue your child, look, there's the pig. Look, there's the coin. Look at the coin. Up, 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 in. I want to add, you do not need fancy toys to start playing with your child and incorporating more of these joint attention imitation activities into your daily play. I would suggest that you figure out what captures your child's attention and you make that your play activity. If your child is captured by the item or loving something or playing with that, take that, get at their eye level, face to face and just play and try to incorporate more uh, communication temptations. So you hold the items and you slowly hand them to the child. They have to work for it and that's how they start including you in your play. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. This is an idea of how you can start incorporating some of these play skills into your sessions and at home. So let me know if you have any questions and until next time, I wish you love, I wish you lots of joy and don't forget to play, play, play. Bye friends. Adios amigos. Besos.